Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number seven from the February March 2020 Mechanics M1 paper. It's paper four, variant two from the 9709 Cambridge International A level um, exam. And this question here is about variable acceleration. It is the last question on this paper. And it mentions um, a particle moving in a straight line through the point O. The displacement of the particle from O at time t seconds is s meters, where s equals t squared minus 3t plus 2 for values of t between 0 and 6. Okay, of course, seconds. Then it says the displacement s equals 24 over 2, 2 t, sorry, minus t squared over 4 plus 25 for values of t greater than or equal to 6. So basically, this um, particle, its displacement is described by this equation for the first six seconds of its motion. And then from six seconds onwards, its displacement is described by the second equation. So this is how this is acting in different ways, different parts of its domain. Okay, so the first part of its motion is described by this quadratic, and the second part by this kind of reciprocal type of um, strange looking function here. So it says here, find the value of t when the particle is instantaneously at rest during the first six seconds of its motion. So instantaneously at rest means where the velocity becomes zero. Okay, now the velocity is the gradient of the displacement time graph. So when the velocity is zero, the gradient of the displacement time graph will be zero. Okay, so we can say that Basically, um, ds dt, just put this here, ds dt is equal to zero when the velocity is equal to zero. Because the velocity is ds dt. The velocity is the rate of change of the speed. So we have, for the first six seconds, we have to concentrate on this equation. This is for the first six seconds. So we have to deal with this equation when we're dealing with this first question, part A. So we have S equals T squared minus 3T plus 2. That is the equation of the displacement for the first six seconds. So we've got to find the value of the time when this ds dt is zero. So we've got to find the gradient function ds dt, which is differentiating this. So you have T squared becomes 2T, multiplied by the power, take one from the power, and negative 3t, the t is dropped, you're left with 3, negative 3. So that is the expression for the gradient of the displacement time graph, which tells us the velocity. So we want to find when the s dt is equal to 0, when, it's, when the gradient is 0. So you have 2t minus 3 equals 0. So t is equal to 3 over 2, which is 1.5 seconds. Okay, so there's the answer for question part A. Okay, so this is like a quadratic, and that's the time at which the object is instantaneously at rest, okay, which would be the minimum point of this curve here, okay, because this is a quadratic. All right, now, for part B, it says, at time equals 6, the particle hits a barrier at a point P and rebounds. Find the velocity with which the particle arrives at P and also the velocity with which the particle leaves P. So when it arrives at P, when it arrives at p, it is following this equation, s equals t squared minus 3t plus 2. And we want to find the velocity when it arrives at p, which is at 6 seconds. So we've got to find the s dt, which we already found for this equation. Okay, the s dt when, when t equals 6 seconds. So we worked out the s dt already as 2t minus 3. So when t equals 6, we have the s dt, which is the velocity equals, um, let me not do that, it looks like it's multiplying. So the velocity, okay, when it arrives, is going to be 2 times 6 minus 3, which is 12 minus 3, which is 9 meters per second. Okay, so that's the, the velocity which it arrives. Now, then it leaves P. When it leaves P, it's now following the equation S equals 24 over T minus T squared over 4 plus 25. 
Okay, so what we have to do here is you have to get this ready to, to differentiate. We have to find the SDT again when t equals 6, but this time using this equation, which describes what happens after it rebounds off the wall or whatever it was. Okay, barrier. Okay, now, so we need to get this ready to be differentiated. So we write this as s equals 24. This will be t to the power of minus 1, minus, write this as a quarter, t to the power of 2, plus 25. So we can find the SDT by differentiating this. So multiply by the power, this is minus 24, um, t to the power of negative 2, take one from the power, minus 2 times a quarter is um, 1 over 2, half, t to the power of 1, and the 25 is dropped. So now we need to, let's rewrite this first. This is the SDT equals, I'll write it over here, 24 over, or negative 24 over t squared, minus a half times t, okay? And we want to find the SDT when t equals 6. So the SDT, when t equals 6 for leaving, okay, you're going to have the velocity is going to be um, minus 24 over 6 squared, um, minus a half times 6. Okay, so you're going to have minus 24 over 36, minus a half times 6, so that's 24 over 36, I think is going to be 12, 2 thirds. So minus 2 thirds, minus 3, which is minus 3 and 2 thirds, which you can say is negative 3.67 meters per second to 3 SF. Okay, that's the exact value. That's the rounded value to 3 SF. Negative 3.67 meters per second. That is the velocity when it leaves. Negative 3.67 meters per second. Okay, so there's the answer to question uh, part b so this is the velocity when it arrives and this is the velocity when it when it leaves okay uh, it leaves the barrier okay now that's part b done now for part c it says find the total distance traveled now it doesn't say displacement it says distance by the particle in the first 10 seconds of its motion now if it said displacement then i would take this integrate it between 0 and 6, and then take this, integrate it between 6 and 10, and add the two answers together without worrying about anything else. But here it says distance. There's a difference between distance and displacement. Okay, something, for example, is moving in one direction, right, it travels a certain uh, distance, but then if it turns back, then its distance is going to be what it traveled plus the amount that it went back again. But its displacement will just be how far it ends up in compared to where it started. So the dis distance would be all of this, but the displacement would only be this much. So if supposing something went 10 meters one way and 5 meters the other way, right? It came back again. So its distance would be 10 plus 5, which is 15, but its displacement would be just 5, how far away it is from where it started. So there's a difference between displ displacement and distance, which is very, very important. So if we consider this, okay, we've got to think about does it change direction? Does its um, you know, velocity ever become negative, basically? Right? So let's consider the first part. Let's, let's make a sketch of this. I'm going to draw a little graph here. So if we think about s equals t squared minus 3t plus 2, let's start at the beginning of the journey. The beginning of the journey, this is going to be at 2. When t equals 0, it's going to start two meters away from where it started. Let's just say this is two. And it's going to be this type of uh, smiley face. It's going to go down and up again, right? So let's think about the lowest it reaches. We worked out that's when time equals 3.5 already. It reaches its lowest point, okay? So let's see what its displacement was when t equals 3.5. You have 3.5 squared. Um, so it was 1.5, so it was 3 over 2. It was 1.5, 3 over 2. If we go back to the first question, it was 1 over, I, I miss, it was 3 over 2, that's right. That's when it reaches its minimum point first, 
Okay, we can we can see from here even, we can work out the vertex. This is a quadratic. We can even write this as uh, t minus 3 over 2 squared minus 9 over 4 plus 2. So we can think of this as s equals um, t minus 3 over 2 squared. And you've got minus, that's minus 2 and a quarter plus uh, 2. That's minus, it's going to be minus uh, a quarter. Okay, so you have minus 1 over 4. Minus, as I said, 9 over 4, 3 over 2, minus 2. So you have S equals T minus 3 over 2 squared. And that's going to be, oh, sorry, that's a plus 2. That's going to give you minus a quarter. Okay, because you have 2 minus 9 over 4, which is 2 minus 2 and a quarter. So we can see that this is at, when time equals 1.5 seconds, let's put it here. When time equals 1.5 seconds, it goes below the time axis for this displacement. So that means in this region here, it's going to be moving in the opposite direction. Okay, when it goes below here. Okay, but we know that this distance here, this, 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 um, Displacement is negative 0 0.25. Okay, 1.5 and negative 0 0.25. And then it goes for six seconds. It goes like this. And then we've got to work out where it ends up after six seconds. Okay, this is the point where it hits the barrier and changes its movement. So at six seconds, we have the displacement is, when t equals six, the displacement is six squared minus 3 times 6 plus 2. So that's going to give you um, s equals 36 minus 18 plus 2. Okay, so that's 36 plus 2 is 38 minus 8. That's going to be 20 meters. Okay, so at 6 seconds, it's reached 20 meters. So let's try and make this a bit more realistic. Okay, so it's going down like this. Reaches the minimum point, comes up, and it goes all the way up to 20 meters. Okay, so there we have, let's say, 20 meters. Okay, so this is a displacement, sorry, against time. So now, basically, so we can think of it as it's gone down from 2 to negative um, a quarter. And then it's gone from negative quarter up to 20. So we can see that this distance here, the the distance, okay, for the first part of the journey here, where it reaches minimum point, that's going to be 2 plus point, point, point 0.25. We don't care about the direction, we care about the magnitude. So that's 2.25, basically. 2.25 is from here to here. And then it's gone from here up to there. So we can see that this is going to be minus 0.25, so it would be 0.25 plus 20. So from there to there, from here up to there, it's going to be 20.25. 20.25. And then what happens is it changes and it starts acting according to this new situation here. Okay. So we want to find up to what second? 10 seconds. So we want to find up to what happens up to 10 seconds. Now, when you find what the displacement is at 6 seconds, it should give us 20 because, you know, when this leaves off, this should start. You can make sure 24 over 6 is 4, okay, and um, 6 squared is 36 over 4, which is 9. So 4 minus 9 gives you minus 5. Minus 5 plus 25 is 20, so of course... All right, the the start of the new section is going to be the same place. Um, this place will be the same, which is 20. But what happens in the first 10 seconds? Okay, we know that it's uh, or between 6 and 10 seconds. Let's find the displacement when time equals 6 or time equals 10 in this second equation. So you have 24 over t. And you have minus t squared over 4 plus 25. 
Okay, so this is going to give us s equals 24 over 10 minus 10 squared over 4 plus 25. Now this gives us 100 over 4, which is 25. So minus 25 plus 25 is 0. You're left with s equals 2.4 meters. So the displacement after 10 seconds is going to be 2.4 meters. So what's, what's going to happen with this? We're not sure what it looks like. I'll just draw anything like this. But, you know, we're not sure exactly how it looks like. This is a strange type of equation. Um, but, you know, just put that something like this is no problem. But we can see in this last, between 6 and 10 seconds, its displacement is described as basically going from 20 to 2.4. This is 2.4. That's as far as it goes. All right, 2.4. Okay, so that's where it stops. So what's this distance between here? It's 20 minus 2.4. 20 minus 2.4. That's how far it's gone down. That's 20 minus 2.4. That's going to be 17.6 um, meters. So we can say that the total distance traveled, the total distance traveled, the total distance is going to be so you have this section here which is 2 plus 0 0.5 0 0.25 which is 2.25 plus okay and then you got this section that goes from negative 0 0.25 up to 20 so that's 20 plus um 20.25 20 plus 0 0.25 and then finally it goes from 20 down to 2.4 so that's a distance traveled of that's going to be a distance traveled distance traveled of 17.6 meters so we're going to have plus 17.6 those are the distances involved okay so that will give us our answer so we take the calculator and we put these values in so we have 2.25 plus 20.25 plus 17.6 okay and that gives us 401 over 10 which is 40.1 meters that's the total displacement in the first uh 10 seconds of its motion the total dis dis not displacement the total distance traveled okay so this is the distance traveled okay not the displacement the distance okay it's the amount of ground traveled its displacement would basically be 2.4, where it ends up in relation to where it started. But its distance is how much ground it's covered in getting there. So it went one way, then went the other way, and so on. Okay, so that answers part C of this question. And I think that is the end of this question. Yes, and it's the end of this paper. So that um, wraps up this paper. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist which will appear in the top right of this screen at the end of the video. Other questions from this um, topic of what's called a variable acceleration can be found in the playlist that will appear at the bottom right of the paper. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And you can watch a video that tells you how to use my channel to find what you're looking for from the link on the top here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.